Um, like the call to order the September 14th, 2022 Towns and Conservation Commission um, meeting at 7.03 p.m. May I have a roll call, please? Ann LeClaire? Oh, okay, this way. <laughs> Joan Savoy, present. That's why. All right, Pat Jumlo, present. James Gates, present. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Um, meeting is being recorded. Is anyone else recording? Uh, chairman's uh, additions or deletions. Um, I do not have any at this time. Um, chair report. Um, I don't know if everyone is, or if everyone pays attention to the news, but um, there was a stump dump fire up on Log Cabin in Ashby. Um, if anyone's interested in seeing the pictures of the illegal dump burning, I do have some, but uh, it was a mess. Um, so anytime we have, I think moving forward, or I feel moving forward, anytime we have a um, complaint about possible illegal bills, we need to investigate thoroughly um, to prevent what has happened up there. Um, because it is a, yeah, it's, it's a fill, a 48 foot fill. Oh my gosh. And wow. Over acres. Wow. So do they know who dumped it? Yeah. Well, they, wow. they, the property owners and responsible. Um, so that was, it's not a good situation and I want to make sure that we, uh, prevent that in our town. Um, so that's all I have, uh, review and approve the meeting minutes from 8, 10, 22. Does anyone have any questions? No, they, they look fine to me. Yeah, I read them. They look fine to me as well. Pat? Thanks, Matt. No, everything looks good. So um, we need a motion and a second. Make a motion to um, approve the meeting meeting minutes from August 10th, 2022. No second that. Roll call, please. Joan Savoy, yes. Pat Jamal, yes. James Gates, yes. And let's make it, yes. Agents report 1.6. Hi, Jessica. Hey. All right. Um, let's see. Dates covered was August, were August 22nd to September 9th. Um, building permit interdepartmental signatures for 85 South Harbor Road, 19 Sauna Row Road, and 12 Maplewood Drive. We completed the referral for 256 Main Street. And then there was the Board of Health interdepartmental sign off for 96 Fitchburg Road. Uh, we are still awaiting one compliance item for the request for the OOC extension for 27 Scales Lane. Um, we issued the determination of applicability for 9 Gilchrist Road pool installation on August 31st. We are still continuing efforts to contact applicants with outstanding orders of conditions to get their certificates of compliance filed. Um, I had some initial coordination with a resident at 421 to 423 Main Street for tree removal and invasive species removal. Um, we met the applicant for 177 Lunenburg Road, did some past file review and we visited for a pre-application meeting on August 24th. We have a request for certificate of compliance for 19 Main Street. We did our compliance site visit on August 24th. Uh, we conducted desktop reviews of 227 Mason Road for referral purposes and then Matt and I actually went out and did a site visit today. Um, we visited 162 Fitchburg Road for a possible upcoming wetland crossing request. We, um, re, or we, we made one formatting revision to our current fee schedule 
some of the spacing was off, so we just made that and updated it on the website. We have a request for a certificate of compliance at 225 Mason Road. We did our site visit on August 31st. I met with town council on August 30th to discuss our preliminary comments from our reviews of Towns of Wentland Bylaw Chapter 138. And then I prepared a summary of my meeting with him, which we'll go over tonight. Um, we have been researching certificate of compliance and administrative compliance in general for the Deer Run subdivision. Um, conducted a pre construction and erosion control inspection for 6 Shirley Road on September 7th. We have a new NOI in for 238 South Row Road. The public hearing is scheduled for September 28th. We had an NOI submitted for 22 Sano Row Road. Um, however, based on my pre preliminary review, that application is still incomplete at this time. We have a request for COC 196 Warren Road with a site visit conducted on September 7th. Then we started some preliminary coordination on a habitat restoration project in town. And that is all. Jessica, what's the small habitat restoration project? Squawk Meadows. Is the soccer, so uh, Taza been notified? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We're meeting more about it on Friday, so I don't actually know about your answer. That answer. Okay. Um, but board of selectmen. Uh, I don't want to speak out of turn because I don't really know. Board of selectmen, I believe, voted to approve work to occur on the property already. Yeah, it, um, it's a small. It's just small stuff on the. Slope. Yeah, it's some small tree removal stuff. Yeah. Um, but we'll be needing an application from them for conservation. So you guys will be kept in the loop once we determine which route to go for that. Okay. I'm trying to remember what the process is for that stuff, I think. If it's by hand, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, what are the questions? Does anyone have any other questions? We'll just look through it again. <laughs> but where's the Deer Run subdivision? Unless the drive off Ash Street. Um, uh, what's that called? Timberly? Yeah. yeah. Behind 91 Ash. Yeah. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think there's, I think it's called, behind there even is Deer Run Conservation Land. Um, well, how old are the... They opened, their, they opened their first permit in 2007, um, and it's a mess because of the recession. Um, the first permit was opened for the installation of the road itself, and then utilities and stormwater infrastructure. And then they subdivided the parcel into like 18 lots or however many houses are there today, and then needed four or five more orders of conditions for individual houses. And then they got several RDAs for some other houses, but we have identified that none of that was ever closed out or got COCs for. So um, because of the timing of the whole development, there's like four or five different developer LLCs tied to the project, many of which seem to no longer be in business. So. We are just having a time trying to track people down that can help us close those out. Well, we appreciate your work. Oh, yeah. Thank Here's you. And Matt's work. Thank you. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Or uh, I have one quick question. Uh, did the OneDrive link work for all you guys? Yes. Yes, it did. All right. Awesome. I don't, I don't like it. So. Uh, <laughs> okay. Dang. Okay. No, no, no it it's okay. It worked, Matt. All right. <laughs> it's something, I, I guess. Clumsy. <laughs> but it will work. Still it... working on some of mine. I mean, I'm not quite finished with it, but. I hear you. 
It, so it worked for everyone that's here. So that's okay. all that matters. Progress, progress. Oh, no, that's big news. As long as it works for everyone. Um, okay. Let's think about your run. Um, I, I just got, I have, I haven't looked at your uh, OOC outstanding list in a while, but uh, have you added a column for um, the ones that have been completed? Um, not to the, or well, this is, hold on real quick. Matt, did you remove that list from this folder? I haven't yet, okay, um, but fine. I was updating it. I, I think it's slightly out of date now. Um, okay. Yeah, so I have but, been working on a different list that's not linked to our OneDrive. It's been linked to our um, like computer drive. That was um, nice about the Google Sheets was you could pull it up uh, and you could like see uh, it real time. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'm not going to dwell on that. I was just curious because when I reviewed it last, I saw some names that I knew. And yeah, I, you know, I have asked. Yes, yeah, so we have a column in there for like notes about just just notes in general. So I've been putting in when I first contacted the applicant, did I do it via email, via letter, whatever? Who did I send it to? Um, and then we also have a a, a, um, a column in there about like the status of the certificate of compliance. So in that column, yes, it would state if one was issued or if one's ongoing or pending or something like that. Um, and then what I tend to do once it's been issued and properly closed out is I just hide that particular row. So it still exists in the spreadsheet, but it just helps consolidate the mass a little bit. Okay. Do you know offhand how far back you've gotten so far? Obviously back to 2007. Uh, no, this one, the deer run actually just came about via a um, closing attorney. So all we have meeting records for were 2000, down to 2015. So I think we're only back to like oh. 2019, 2018-ish now. Um, but we made a good chunk of them. But yeah, it just takes a lot of time. And we'll, we'll get there one day when we have some of that. I have a question. Why did we get rid of Google? I don't think I knew that. Um, Were what, they changing things? And Pat asked it? why we got rid of Google. It was a um, logistics problem. Yeah. People were having problems opening the. Okay. People were having problems uh, using the link, I think. You were using over your like your multiple weeks. Right? People that didn't have a Gmail account, I think it was, were having trouble yeah. with it. Yeah, that's what it was. Well, you had problems with the Google account? Yeah, but I have Gmail. I, I do have Gmail. Oh, but what, was it being mailed to your Gmail? No, it was being mailed to my other account. Yeah, that's, one you that's check. why. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. one that I'm always checking. Yeah. Right. I didn't get it to my Gmail yeah. account. I'll have to show you how to forward those. Good. Uh, who else? Did anyone else have problems besides Ann? I think Kobe, may, maybe, briefly. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Briefly. But he, was, he used his phone like I used mine to pull it up. Right. I think he only had problem like one or two of the weeks. Um, Okay, well, no one else, there's only four of us here tonight, so we don't need to go dwell on this. No, I, I can ask it again next time. Uh, maybe we won't have to fall in love with OneDrive. <laughs> True. True. One thing I was wondering, actually, with the, since we're just discussing it, is there a way to keep all of, well, actually, you probably don't have enough storage. I'm going to say keep all of the meeting materials, even for, you know, an extended period in there so we could have references yeah the previous meeting is in there yeah just one i'm talking yeah, yeah. that's because it's the new system so oh. i was running out of space because i originally were using my personal like gmail account as where i was uploading everything and so i was like putting everything in an archive and saving it to the desktop um but then when we switched over to uh, the town gmail that we made uh that's got all new space so we could maybe do it in there 
um, have an archive of all the past meeting materials. Okay, well, we started the dialogue. We can... Yeah, go from there. Yeah. Maybe okay. would it help if like at the next meeting, if we did a little work session where Matt screen shared to help just people navigate how to review files in OneDrive? I don't have Microsoft or I have Microsoft, but I don't have Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it, it's cumbersome to me, but that's just because I'm stuck in my ways. So, I'm not very good with computers. And if it wasn't for my son, I wouldn't even get to one drive. So right. we should ask your son what he prefers. <laughs> so, I mean, he's really good at it and stuff, but I, I he can know. just he can just come to the next meeting with you. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you care as long as you can get I, to the. I, 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 done. Okay. I'm in. Let's, nope, just, let's, just, let's just move on. All right. All right. <laughs> I think the easiest thing to do would have been if we'd all just gotten a Gmail account and then easy peasy, we could have just kept going the way we had, If you actually share the share the link and it's a public, considered a public folder, you just share a link and anyone can access it. But as long as you have to have the link. So yeah. I that believe that's what I believe that's what we were doing. So okay. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna move move this along. Okay. We don't, Sounds good. Four of us here. We don't need to drag this out until 9:30. That's fine. Uh, certificate of compliance request for 19 Main Street, North Middlesex Regional High School, DEP number 3080622. Oh, this is thin compared to 225. That's just the extension. We have like the 30 by 42 plans in the office, but they're gigantic and really heavy. So, sorry. You were joining <laughs> the, the In the folder, there's a, um, somewhere in there, there's like a, an as-built of the site. So um, basically for this one, they had an order of conditions to build a maintenance garage within 100 yep. feet of a bordering vegetated wetland and then just do other site minor site improvements um, also within 100 feet of another wetland up by the um the existing baseball field up there so matt and i made a visit a couple weeks ago a compliance visit after receiving their request for coc um everything looked like it was built According to plan, we received the as built. We received certifications from professional engineers saying that everything was built according to their plans. Um, and we agreed. So I recommend issuance of a complete certification for the uh, CFC to these folks. Real quick, Jessica, I just remember they were storing some stuff near the yes. wetlands, right? Did they yep. take that out? They did take it out. Yeah. So okay. they, um, down by behind the maintenance shed, right at the base of the slope, which would have been like 10 or 15 feet from the wetland. They were just stro storing some. They were attachments, weren't they, for the equipment? Well, I don't even know what it was. I don't remember what it was. Oh, there a bunch of stuff in, in the front folder. of the garage one day. Um, it was stuff behind the garage. Let's see. Oh, it's like That's long stretches. Metal the pipe and like old yeah. fences and stuff. Yeah. So nothing like that would pollute. But um, we just reminded them of the 35 foot no touch, especially since this is new development. So it wouldn't be grandfathered in in any way. Um, but they removed it outside of the 35 feet. So, and I had, and they sent pictures showing that they cleaned it up. So thank you, Matt, for the reminder. Okay. Need a motion and a second. I'd like to make a motion. Uh, <clears throat> to uh, issue a certificate of compliance for 19 Main Street, which is North Middlesex Regional High School, DEP 308 0622. Second. Mm -hmm. Roll call vote, please. Joan Savoy, yes. Pat yes. James Gates, yes. Dan Laquita, yes. Okay, um, 
3.2 certificate of compliance request for 225 Mason Road, BEP number 308-0625. Jessica, I'd appreciate you speaking to this, please. Sure. Um, so this one was for a septic repair in i believe it was in within the riverfront area um and it was just one of the ones that the work was done in a couple of weeks but the certificate of compliance was never filed for so it was a few years old and expired um so i contacted this is one of our um contacts for old applicants that we found so he submitted the request for coc um but he is the new homeowner and not the, the the past homeowner who had any of the septic work done. So he had no involvement in any of the plan preparation or anything. So um, we had advised him to write a waiver to to waive as a request to waive the need for a professional engineer to come certify the project. Um, so that is waiver request number one. And then waiver request number two is that we found that the original order of conditions was never recorded at the registry of deeds. Um, so we are, he is also requesting that the commission waives the recording requirement for the certificate of compliance so that there's no wonky one-sided thing weighing his title down. Um, but we would have record of full proper closure, at least from the, the town administrative level. But otherwise, it, it looked like the septic was in place where it should have been. Everything was stable. So um, complete certification would be my recommendation as well. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions or concerns or discussion? I would um, just definitely go ahead and approve that. I'm just grateful Matt and Jessica are keeping track of these yeah. things nowadays. So thank you. Well, and they're fixing, going yeah, forward. They're navigating our way through through all these. I make a motion we approve the certificate of uh, compliance request for 225 Mason Road DEP 308-0625. We'll second that. Roll call, please. Joan Savoy, yes. Pat General, yes. James Gates, yes. Yeah. Miller yes. And then can you also make motions to waive the recording of the COC requirement and waive the professional engineer statement of compliance? Please. I make a motion that for uh, 225 Mason Road, we waive the uh, recording of the certi certificate of compliance and a necessity to have an engineer uh, sign off on the plan. Thank you. We have a second. Second. Roll call vote, please. Joan Savoy, yes. Pat General, yes. James Gates, yes. And I'll put yes. Um, certificate of compliance request for 196 Warren Road, DEP number 308-0317. Oh, all right. I'll take the mic again. Um, this one was for the development of a single family home and associated utilities for it back in the 1990s. So um, they just need a certificate of compliance because I believe their house is for sale. So they just want to be able to clear their title. So we made an inspection. 96. 96, thank you. So Matt and I made an inspection, all looked good. Um, so I'd recommend issuance of a complete certification for this one also. Mm -hmm. 
Does anyone have any questions, concerns, discussion? Nope. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'd like to make a motion that we um, <clears throat> approve the certificate, certificate of compliance for 196 Warren Road, DEP 308-0317. Second. Roll call vote, please. Joan Savoy, yes. Pat General, yes. James Deets, yes. Dan LeClaire, yes. Generating some revenue for the town this month. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Moving on to 3.4. Uh, mandatory referral notice from planning board um, regarding 227 Mason Road. Uh, the dog kennel. Yep. Um, so this one is just my catch. Um, this one is an existing residential structure that is um, was was last licensed as a daycare facility for humans for for children. That was weird. Um, <laughs> and then, well, you'll get it in the, in the next part of this. And and now currently they were um, uh, found to be operating a an unpermitted doggy daycare. No longer humans there, but dogs now. Um, so anyway, so they need um, to get permission, obviously, to do such. So for the planning board referral portion, um, the their review is going to be for the applicant requesting a waiver from having formal site plans drawn up for the property by a professional engineer again, just because he's literally just changing the interior use of his house. Um, and then the, the Zoning Board of Appeals referral, which we'll get to next, um, mm -hmm. is for, the act, for, for permitting the, the actual change in use of the site from the child to dog daycare. Um, so Matt and I made a site visit out here today. Um, the entire property, or well, like the, the backyard of the property is a pond, and then across the street from the front yard of the property is Mason Brook or Creek or something. So it would be a perennial. So with the 200 foot riverfront, 200, yeah, 200 foot riverfront area, um, in addition to the 100 foot wetland buffer, the entire property is within our regulation. Um, but because this application is, is mainly specifically for change in use for the interior of the structure. Um, there's not much under our jurisdiction. So we're talking then, specifically about the planning board right now. Planning board. Yes, yeah, so the planning board is for the site plans. So um, at what I mean, point we can, we can we ask questions about the outside use. Well, we can, do, yeah, I mean, we can ask, we can just provide identical, it's probably recommended that we provide identical comments on both referrals. Um, but yeah, so today the outside of the property, it's mostly lawn, um, there is a chain linked fenced in area in his backyard. Um, and then he also has like a chicken little shed and chicken coop and ducks and geese or something like that. Um, there's, uh, what else is there? Oh, they do, um, item to note, they do compost all animal waste on site, including um, like normal household compost, vegetables, scraps, things like that. So, um, the, the applicant owner today told us that he tries to compost in accordance with USDA regulations. Um, but the, look at all your faces, but the... <laughs> well, <laughs> um, like, so then the guy up in Ashby. But no. <laughs> the, that... So yeah, so his compost bin is just like a 10 square foot thing. Um, 
it just seemed like it was homemade, like wooden pieces melt together. Yeah, it's pretty small, but he doesn't have any liners or anything, but it's definitely, it's like 15 feet from that pond edge. So um, I guess if you guys were to comment concerned about water quality, that would, yeah. that would be your time to shine. Hmm. That's problematic. Could be very problematic. What are so you concerned did, about their plan that they provided? So the applicant is a general contractor. So he has some sort of his own like mapping drawing program. So I think that's his intent is to try to do it himself. Okay. It's not terrible. He doesn't have any of the, he doesn't have any of the 35 foot or the 100 foot mark though. So that's, that's, that's something you could put as a referral comment. I would also like to add as a referral comment and that um, the composting area has to be um, uh, re moved to oh, Certifiable, certify, right, certifiable distance from the wetlands, wetlands, right, under whatever USDA regs, town regs, Board of Health regs, who's ever regs, but. Yeah, so I know, yeah, yeah I know he has started um, communicating with the Board of Health as well on this, so, and they were discussing that tonight at their six o'clock meeting, so he did offer to, um, like, put a plastic or whatever type of liner in the bin currently. Um, we also talked about maybe putting some sort of like hay bales or some kind of barrier between the bin and the pond. Um, but it's you know, I don't, I don't, almost four and a half acres. He should have a place to move it to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all good, all good comments that we can put on the So referral. Hold, I'm just going to write this down, um, on a, our agenda, just so I don't muck it up. Uh, so 35 foot. There, yeah, there are no, there are no, line. just, there are no lines on this for distances. And it, the ones that are, you foot. can't even see them, James. What lines? I mean, can you, James, can you read that? Can you read that? Friday, I get my thing first. Oh, exciting. Very right. good for um, you. Yeah. All right, and then we'll compost. I'd like a, to see a plan where you can actually read the distances as marked as required. The uh, lines, you know, 35 foot, 50 foot, 100 foot, 200 foot. Yeah. yeah. No way, no way. Uh, excuse me, do you guys need a uh, screen share? Uh, Jessica, do you have that plan on in a PDF? Uh, that's... Great question. On oh, a PDF that's legible? No. Well, yeah, if it's only an eight and a half by 11 on yes, PDF, it's, it's all, not it's all eight and a half by 11. It might be a little bit clearer. Um, on the original email. We might have just lost a lot of the quality. Let's see. Uh, no, it's still pretty fuzzy on here because it's a scan. That's why it's hard to read. On um, their end or yours? Both. So the one that the, um, planning board admin sent out was a scan of the hard copy application. So there, there probably is one in the land use office that is more legible, um, but it would be a hard copy. Okay, let me know if you need a, a, a screen share. Okay, yeah, not right now. Thank you though. Yeah, it's a commercial business with, with 
waste, animal waste and stuff, we, we really sure. need to, and it's all wet, the wetlands, we need to see those. And it's jurisdictional, we need to see those lines. Okay, Jessica, what else do you, or what other observations or recommendations do you have? No, I think that was pretty much it. Um, I took some pictures today, too. Um, but, yeah, no, I think, yeah, the big, the big thing for me was what's happening to the animal waste, because it's all so close to that pond. Um, Jessica, were, were they fined for for not applying for a change of use? Do you know? I don't know. That'd be a question for the building commissioner. I do know about the waste. Is they they do have a fence, so the dogs aren't being let run to let you know to right. run around in the pond or you know go wherever they want. They're they're fenced in, so that's something. Is there a way that they can move the composting? They're going to have to. Yeah. Well, is that something that we can put in? In our our yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I would think that would, it should be moved. Do we want to see it outside the 35? I have, I wrote down 35. Folks, there's but actually regs. I remember when Andrew did his chicken farm, the, so, there's a real reg warehouse how far away that compost has to be. So we can say per board of health. Yes, because the Board of Health. Right. Have. So you can throw it in right. Jim's lap. <laughs> right. You're right. Board of Health. Yeah. Based on USDA or yep. something. Yeah. Yep. But got, it definitely would cause the Board of yep. Health. It's a dog kennel. It's not large scale, you know. Yeah, but it's animal feces. Oh, I know. It's got to be. I, I, will, I will say that they have, I guess, recorded upwards of 30 dogs at once. Um. Here, it's not a boarding facility, is that correct? Yeah, well, yeah, are they bo boarding any? Not that it really matters, I guess. Um, I don't know. Let me look at the application. His um request letter operate our dog boarding and daycare business. Oh, it is a boarding. Mm -hmm. Um so they have all the waste from the dogs and the, I don't know, what they have, 15-ish poultry creatures? Upwards of 20, yeah, I would say. Yeah, I, you know, animal, like chicken waste is a very different thing from dog waste as far as composting too. Yeah, it's toxic. Right, it's, it's toxic. toxic. I don't even know if you're allowed, right. So it has I, high nitrogen. Yeah, so yeah it right. It will cause yeah. algae in the pond. But yeah. The chicken requirements. Yeah, yeah, but there are requirements for numbers. Well, the dog, I'm, I'm talking dog, the dog who. Right, but you also said poultry. Someone's yeah, poultry. poultry. Poultry's okay. I mean, you still have oh, yeah. yeah. the poultry, pond. Poultry has high nitrogen. Right, very high. Dog, you I'm never see saying. dog poop manure for sale. They just don't do it. It's got to be really okay. So, amongst all the talk about poo, um, <laughs> they I don't know how to like run, you know, run like YouTube. How do I say this? So, they have, yeah, like the 15 or 20 poultry creatures, um, are all I would say likely ca caged, kenneled within 35 feet of the pond also. Well, that's not right. Is it, that's not correct. Or, no. That's not okay. No, that's, can't be And how big, a, how big a, is it a so, shelf or is it a so shed? Let me, let me, um, Harley, can you hit me with some uh, screen share, please? Because if they have a shed in the 35 foot buffer too. Hmm. It's like a little tiny, like, you know, like a coop where they go to lean, lean uh, lay eggs so like you have a picture of it? yes okay. Bartley can I have um screen share permissions please I just gave it to you ah, lovely there it is I see it share oh of course that gets blocked oh okay I'll just I'll just show you everything oh my gosh go away okay so Here's the house onto the right. Well, can you guys see this? 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. Here's the house on the right, and then here's the fenced in area. And then you can see there's a pretty decent slope. And then right over here, you can start seeing the fringe vegetation for the pond. And then here, you can see the cattails, which are right there at the edge of the water. So the corner of this fence is probably 15 or so feet from the edge of the pond. But it is not blocking wildlife movement or anything because it's chain link. So, um, Anyway, and then this is with my, my back facing the fence. There's the chicken stuff. Um, and we get closer. Hold on, there's the pond, sorry. Fresh pile. And then there's the more chicken stuff. How far from the water is that? The water's like right behind it there? Um, the water is like... I don't know, 20 feet-ish away, yeah. probably yeah. at the closest point. And then if you can see that little thing back here, probably not. Sorry, I should have gotten a better picture, but it was so bright. That's, that's where their compost is. Even closer to the water? Yes. Okay. And the water's even, and it's uphill of up gradient of the, of the water. Correct. Yeah, it's definitely uh, a, yeah. a flat <laughs> gradient right here compared to the, the fence down to the pond. This is, this is definitely flat. Um, but yes, a lot of this stuff is very close to the, to the pond edge. This is really problematic, I think. Yeah, I don't think that's a good thing. Yeah, um, uh-oh, they're Um, Oh man. So the fencing is within the 35 feet for the kennel too, not just poultry, but the part of it. Yeah. Let me hang tight one second. Mouse mapper. I can pull up an aerial. We can measure some stuff. I did all these measurements before, but of course I forgot now. All right. So here's the pond. Here's the corner of the fence. So I'll zoom in a little bit. We'll measure the feet. So the corner of the fence is about here ish. The edge of the pond, 20 or so feet. And it, has, this, um, has this property come in front of the commission before? No. Never. Uh, okay. Not recently, at least. Because they, maybe they put the fence in for the daycare at some point and it was. I, I, my sense is that they just did whatever they did, and this is, and well, how everybody, far? we're just finding out about it now. Well, the fence he might have been put up uh, for child care. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Was that so, so I know, I definitely know the fence was there before they moved in. Um, the chicken coop is, I'm going to, we're in 2021 aerial. I'm going to switch to 2019 aerial, and it's gone. Oh, so, I'm gonna yeah, go barking up the thank tree. Thank you for that. Of course. Go, I don't. I feel that we don't need to bark up or go down that rabbit hole for the fence because it was probably for the child care. And if the right. child care facility was proved, right, it had to come in front of the commission at some point. My problem is I'm, I don't have a problem with the fence. I have a problem with the other things. The, the yeah. Chicken coop. yeah. So these okay. are um, the compost. Where's the compost, please, Jessica? Uh, probably about behind my mouse. No. So measuring approximately um, 30 feet away. And then the uh, chicken coops and such, I guess this is the closest edge, is 35 feet away. You can't have poultry that close to a pond. You field measured the poultry, though? No, we did not field measure, but I'm using this. <laughs> I know, and so. I use. I use GPS all the time too, and all, it's almost always accurate. Um, can you zoom out just so I can see where this is exactly? Where what is? The property. Because you're so fast. Oh, zoom out. Sorry, zoom out. Yes. Yeah. Here, let me pop this up. Can I, um, can 
me do that. This will make hopefully make it easier for you guys to see. Sorry, hang on. Oh my gosh, there we go. Oh, oh slow down. Slow down. <laughs> Sorry, I st I'm stopping. Did you want it closer in? Sorry. Yes, please. I don't know. Yes, yes. There we go. Um, okay, it's right across from Michael's way or whatever that is. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Well, uh, mm. the hearing's October 3rd. There's the, the, um, Oh, one of them is next week. Uh, the planning board, I think, is the 21st. Does that make sense? Yeah, one of them is next week. The other one's early October. Yeah, and the ZBA, I think, is October 3rd. Okay, thank you. I'm going to, I, I feel that contour lines also yeah. are pertinent to this. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, oh, Zoning Board of Appeals is the 21st. Planning Board hearing is October 3rd. Oops, so yeah, I got it switched up. Yep. Yep. Right. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> we know if they... Oh, never mind. Thank you, sorry. Do you want to finish that thought? No, thanks. All right. Uh... Do you have anything else to add, Jessica? Mm. No, I think that covers it. This is why I didn't want to cover this at the last meeting. There was a lot going on. So I need to, to get out of there before we put referrals together. James, can you read to us what you're writing, for, what you've written yep. for the referral, please? Thank you. Um. Uh, let's see, uh, contour lines, 35 foot no disturb um, line, 100 foot wetland buffer line, um, sorry. And then um, move compost bin outside 35 foot buffer. Um, with a sub point of comply with Board of Health requirements. Lovely, thank you. Does anyone else have? I mean, can we infer that they're mixing the dog and the chicken waste yeah. in that compost? Yeah, Most I don't even likely. know if you're allowed to do that. Yeah, you are. Well, well, well there's also, what are the, what size is the compost bin and does it, um, is it big enough to accommodate? Know, well, accommodate, yes. The, I was thinking, is, is it big enough for them to bring in front of the Board of Health? Because you need to have a manure management plan. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, that's why I said Board of Health requirements. Um, oh, and is that only for a commercial operation, though? Well, wouldn't this be considered commercial? Uh, or not or for the chickens, but for the dogs, right? Or right. does it fall underneath? Yeah. It doesn't meet a size requirement to mm -hmm. um, for the Board of Health. Right. Regardless, though, we can require them to move it. Yeah, it, it, it really needs to and be. And it's 35 moved. feet enough. No, I don't, not near, not near a wetland, like with the compost like that. Who, Jessica, what's, what's, what's your thought on like, who, who? If Which board would be pinpointing how far? Whose job is this? Is that board of health to figure out where that compost has to be? Would not be. I don't know. I think. I mean, I, I think because no. actually, no. Yeah, I think so because they had the planning board and ZBA had a site visit on Monday evening, and following that site visit, once they saw the compost, is I think when they got board of health, they had the applicant contact the board of health. Okay. So I would assume, yes, that, that it probably triggers their review somehow. 
Okay. But that doesn't go to say we, of course, cannot, you guys cannot not express concerns about how that would impact water quality. Um, of course, that's in well, your purview. Manure, you know, we, it, it's manure, um, essentially. Manure management, you know, that has to be part of their thought or their, their planning and foresight. Um, and if they're composting dog waste, it can't be within that area. So do we add in our comments, uh, manure management plan, question mark, required, question so, mark? We can say move compost bin dash manure pit. Well, but what about manure management? Like you just said, James, so could we say, is there is a manure management plan required for an operation of this size? So something to that effect, right? Because we don't know, I mean. What is how we know that? Like how, right, and that's why I'm saying right. comply with board of health requirements. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, comply yeah. with board of health. So I'll put yeah. move compost bin outside manure management to comply with, or waste management, animal waste management to comply with board of health. Here. Thank you. And really think of the best way to word it. Um, I do know that the board of health was completing their referral for this at their meeting tonight too, so. Do you know how many feet needs to be? I mean, how uh, I, you know, it's I, funny. I, I actually read up quite a bit on this with the, with the chickens and how many feet the compost has to be. It's gone, but it's, it's, it's far, it's far. But that, but that's, it's only 15. It was the number of chickens, head. turkey. Right. And it's not a commercial uh, fowl operation. It's just duck, a commercial. Uh, chickens, ducks, and oh my gosh. Um, uh, I see. <laughs> do we see any roosters? I don't know. So, I, I different different know. types of ducks. Though. Chicken, ducks, and geese. I think. I don't know. They're all doing their uh, cute little. Yeah. <laughs> 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 sure. Um. Wow. Well, it seems like everybody's really alerted to it now anyway. So can, do we put, um, for the comments, do we put the same ones for, because we've combined 3.4 and 3.5 at this point, um, for planning board and ZBA? I would recommend doing identical comments, yes. So um, just do it one more time. Uh, we're going to put additional plan requirements to include contour lines, 35 foot no disturb line, 100 foot wetland buffer line, um, and then move compost bin outside 35 foot buffer. Because they're compost, they're putting everything in one bin, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, was it overflowing or? No, it was maybe a third, a half the way full. The only issue I had with saying line it is if it rains. Yeah, that's and then that overflowing. Well, um, yeah. again, though, but that's, the, you know, that's with the waste management plan and there are specs. Right. What did it smell? Oh, Jessica? Um, I mean, I only smelled the downwind of the poultry. But that, that would happen literally anywhere that has chickens. So yeah. um, I would also add because Mason Brook is across the street, the 200 foot riverfront area buffer also extends yeah. onto their property. 200 foot uh, river would, buffer. Yeah. Or, just, river, or wetland buffer. Riverfront also, or? area. Yeah. Riverfront okay. river area. Area line. Um, yeah. So move compost bin outside 35 foot buffer. Uh, and I don't, yeah, and I'll just say and comply with compost dash animal waste management um, requirements for Board of Health. Which they did the referral tonight, so it's kind of probably going to go backwards. Or... Yeah. 
We good? Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure that we're not overstepping her. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, the again, their the ultimate goal is for them to just get the change of use from a child daycare to a doggy daycare. So, um, I mean, it's it's absolutely fine to put whatever concerns you have in them, but I don't know how much actually will be able to be validated because just because of the change of use intent. But that doesn't mean that you know, Conservation Commission can decide to um, approach the applicant separately at another time to handle some of these items of concern too. Well, the biggest item of concern on our behalf, I would say, is the compost. The compost. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. so, but they're not, other than that, they're not digging and disturbing and so forth. So, um, I'm pretty sure you can't even have a, a compost bin like that. Third, I think it's got to be over a hundred feet away from from the water. But the, we'll, we'll, the, the, it'll get hashed out between all the different boards, I'm sure. And I'm sure BOH, when they when they're looking at the change of use, they've got their um, strict, um, a regimented uh, dog care facility. Regs. Um, I say we we word it the move compost bin out there so outside the thirty five foot, foot buffer, um, and then comply. Leave it vague and say comply with all board of health requirements for animal waste management and. DEP requirements for yeah I don't know I want to leave it kind of broad too so that they follow you know but. all right well it's just a referral that's the good news yeah I'll fill it out after we're done so do we have a motion to um, for the following comments, contour lines, 35 foot, no disturbed line, 100 foot wetland buffer line, 200 foot riverfront area line, and move compost bin outside 35 foot buffer, comply with all Board of Health requirements with animal waste management. So uh, noted. Yes, I'd just like you to add on the plan, you had the verbiage on the plan for the contour lines in the 35 foot. Yeah, yeah that's okay. what I meant. Thank you. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. yeah, the plan requirements yeah. to include. Uh, so and move. I, I second. Move compost bin outside thirty-five foot buffer. Show on plans. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion. Second. Joan Savoy, yes. Pat Jamal, yes. James Gates, yes. Yeah, McCoy, yes. That was a lot. That was a lot. There was only four of us. <laughs> I hope we didn't overthink this. Um, 3.6 summary of discussion with town council regarding TWB chapter 138. Um, okay, this and 3.7, would you guys like to review one or both, or shall we maybe actually push until we have a full commission present? Um, I think we should probably, so you don't, I think it would be, just be easier to have everyone here. Uh, but I know you and I, Jessica and Matt had a quick um, couple emails, you know, because you want to keep the momentum moving too with all right. this. Right, yeah. I think, um, I think I'd prefer to hold off until the next meeting and then we might just, um, add a little bit more to our chapter 150 reviews over the next couple of meetings to try to get back on schedule. Um, yeah. So you're going to share your summary discussion with town council at the next meeting? 
I think so. Yeah. I mean, it's in it's in the folder, you, so you guys can look at it on your own time. Um, but yeah, I think like presenting it to the commission formally probably just better to do when everyone's there. Um, we can yeah. all discuss it. <laughs> it might be better to do it just right now, but. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But no, he, he did provide some good feedback. So it, I definitely want to share it at some point, but I think it would be better to do it when we have the full board there. Okay, so we're gonna table 3.6, 3.7. Um, moving on to correspondence, um, throw update from mass DEP. Um, uh, last time I checked, what are we in three still? Yeah, still in three. Yeah, this one was just, um, it came out, I think, the day after our last meeting when we had talked about how there were several fresh fires, wildfires going on. And then um, the next day, yeah, they highlighted the fact that with the level three drought status, there is a very extremely high risk for wildfires. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Do we have any discussion, any comments? Keep moving on then. Um, Four point two DCR for cutting plan and notice of intent for Gilcrest Road. So um, there's a stream crossing, but there is an existing culvert. Um, there are two wetland crossings and existing trails. Um, yeah, we can't really do anything about this anyway, so. We discussed, we touched on this a little bit when Gavin was in last meeting, right? James, oh. about the, the the trees that were coming down. Didn't we touch on it a little bit? I thought this we did. Yeah. yeah, it is. I was it's for Parker Park Hill. Hill. Well, no, you have forest cutting plans. No, this is, I think, yeah, he's got 30,000 board feet. Oh, you said Gilchrist, though. No, this is, this is Gavin. This is a different one. This is a different project. The, so this is a forest cutting plan that they're going to do. Oh, this isn't what he was doing around the pool? No. This is a whole nother ball of wax? Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. So, but it's it's a long-term term forest management. Oh, okay. Thank you. I didn't look at the name, but yeah. Um, 30,000 board feet is not bad. Mm -hmm. So, um, Jessica, do you have any comment? I do not. Nope. Yeah, seems pretty cut and dry. <laughs> well, it's dry now, at least. <laughs> so he's, it looks like a 50 50 cut, cut 50, leave 50. What do you do? Yeah, and it's all old farmland, so it's. Yep. Um, so, wetland, so, and there's got to be a seat. This has to be done in a seasonal window because it's near the, in the wet, they're going to be in the wetlands at all. Um, it's got wetland crossing. Harvesting in wetland. Yeah, no, I'm just, it, it most likely will be. We don't really have. So, shouldn't this be done then when the ground is frozen? Uh, or dry. 
or dry or and not during bird bats or birds nesting season there's nothing this is a forest cutting plan it's not they're not clear cutting yeah but still I, I, i'm on i thought i'm i, I could be wrong but i'm oper I mean, operating under the assumption that if you're going to go in and do any tree clearing i mean they're taking out half the trees in a wetland you have to follow some jessica am i getting warm am i way off that you have to follow some protocol on seasons the season um i don't really know but i i mean i know that they have to make these plans in like very strict accordance with their yeah. own regulations so they wouldn't just like take big excavators into the wetland and just go to town um, um i'm sure part of it far. is to file with misa at some point um bats are usually like nesting <clears throat> in the trees like um june july i think so um, there hasn't been any forester comments yet so he might not have a chance to look at it i think he's usually the one who recommends when they should do it um okay because if you look at the barker hill dcr plan this the forester recommends doing it between uh like in october i think he said so right there you go the service forester right so, okay that's ho that's yeah, helpful matt thank you th this was also the plan was prepared by our consultant forester which um yeah they know what they're doing and they mark the they typically will mark the trees that are coming down and they don't just go in there and cut willy-nilly well, I uh, since this is conservation in our jurisdiction, I would not like I'm not comfortable giving approval until we know when the till we see the foresters' comments, quite frankly. So this that we a, this isn't a hearing or a, a um a, a, you know a, a work session thing. This is just a correspondence. Oh, you're this, right. This they just they're just required to notify the conservation commission. Oh, so if somebody's cutting them in a wetlands, so it's not it's not jurisdictional. If you have a long term forest management plan, you can't just go. Can't just gotcha. go cut, Thank but you. you have to have a forest management plan in order to do that. So required for land under um, Chapter sixty one sixty one A of forest stewardship. Thank you. Um, so that settles that. Yeah, and this is just, I, I'm going to assume the beginning because we look at the Barker Hill one next. Yeah. I um, think I might have put the old Barker Hill uh, DCR plan um, in the drive. Uh, so I can screen share the new one. Um, no, it looks new. It has the oh, forest comments. Oh, I did. Okay. Huh. August 12th. Oh, the one I have in the drive was stamped September 6th, so that was only a few days ago. Oh, uh, yeah, I have oh. September 6th. I'm sorry, I'm looking, oh. at the, I'm looking at the letter to Chris Capone. Okay. Yes, you're good. September 6th oh. stamp okay. is the correct one to look at. That is, yeah. Yeah, so it does look like they're required to file with Natural Heritage for these. Yeah, and then to happen during typical hibernation months. So does anybody know the answer to this question? Where where they have the time of year restrictions and stand one only, operation of motorized vehicles within 300 feet of wetlands, water bodies, vernal pools, et cetera, uh, can't be, can only be done during a certain time period. Who actually monitors that? Does somebody actually really monitor that or are you just, I mean, it's like us putting a condition and an order of conditions. So to an extent, we expect it to be followed. But I mean, yeah, like James said, these guys know what they're doing. So yeah, right. Um, yeah. Well, it's not just that, <laughs> but you know, yeah, we've already talked about the Barker Hill thing once and now we have a um nh esp determination letter and more documents but you know they're, they're, it's a forestry management plan um 
you know, it's in 61, chapter 61. But uh, the what I'm curious is in Gavin's, not to backtrack, page, oh, there's page five or five. Never mind. Which is right now better. Yeah. Um, so Parker Hill. So we don't, we just, we're just noting that we received this, these correspondences and that's that, James? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so this one does have the service forester comments on it. Yeah. So the, uh, oh, go ahead, Jessica. Oh, I just, I just was looking right at the top where under forest cover, cutting plan. Um, it's MGL chapter 132. Um, Forest Cutting Practices Act 304 CMR Chapter 11. So, if you guys are interested in learning more about that, that is that's where you would go to read all their requirements and notifications and things like that. It seems. Um. So the time of year restriction stand one only uh, for. Mesh or yeah, for DCR uh, operation of motorized vehicles within 300 feet of wetlands, water bodies, or vernal pools right. occurring um, on site shall only be conducted during the time period beginning October 15th and ending March 15th of any year. Um, 300 foot buffer boundary shall be marked. Um, Paint or flagging and inspected by the DCR service forester or mass wildlife review biologist prior to approval of the plan. Exception, timber harvest harvest will be completed in its entire entirety between October 15th and March 15th of any year. The 300 foot boundaries do not need to be marked. We need to do anything more with that? No. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Discussion? No. Nope. Um, four point four email from town resident with concerns about proposed harbor trace water treatment plant. Um the email is dated August 30th, 2022. Good morning. As a new resident of Townsend, approximately one year, a taxpayer and resident of the Harbor Trace neighborhood, I am formally requesting a meeting with a representative of the following town departments and committees for health, for a selectman, town admin, uh, land use department, water department, board of water commissioners, conservation commission, planning board, zoning board. Uh, as an Budding neighborhood that will be impacted by the water treatment plant and any other potentially planned construction on the site. And in the absence of any public notices or communication from the town, we as residents and taxpayers should have the opportunity to have an open discussion about the plans and any que questions answered related to our concerns. I am requesting this meeting either in person or virtual be scheduled as soon as possible. I believe. All the residents in the Harbor Trace neighborhood, including Cooperage Way, uh, should be invited to attend. Uh, I look forward to your response and am available if you would like to contact me. I can be reached via email. Um, and then all those boards or departments are CC'd. Um, Wouldn't the way this would work is that this individual has to go to all of these, all of the meetings of all of these committees themselves and raise this issue? Well, if this was a, a a blanket email to all of those departments. No, I do know that, but but I'm just like for to to ask to ask that as far as I know, it's never been done. So I'm saying, sh doesn't wouldn't this resident? Be directed to go start maybe with a meet, go to one of the water, ask to be on the agenda at a water commission meeting, 
start there, see if they get their question and answered, and then, if, you know, then they can go. I think that's how procedurally how that would work. But to ask for, for as far as I know, because I've read every you know, West meeting minute back since we've been posting them, there's never been a town resident that it's sort of like you have to go to the boards, the boards will come to you. Um, I mean, we have no information to share, certainly. It's out of our jurisdiction. I will note for this, because we talked about this, obviously, um, that this project, like they, I think they like just decided, but not even 100% formally on a site selection. So like they're nowhere even close to getting bids to contractors or plans or um, like permits to the applicable boards. So it's just way, like somewhere in there, I think this just got really out of control really quickly, but like we're, they're not even at this phase yet. So. Invitation um, to bids going out at the end of the year. The end of this year? Yes. End of this calendar year. So, so who's they, going to be reaching out to this resident? To, and I believe I believe the town administrator was okay. going to respond. So um, this was just a notification because we got it to the conservation email. But um, I think all around, it's just it's it's too early because like even the board, yeah, even the boards haven't gotten formally notified of this yet. So. Um, they haven't even needed in their application phase to do about our notifications or anything yet. So Eric's on it. I think so, yeah. This is a very involved project. You know, they're going to run two water mains down that neighborhood to this plant. One coming in, into the plant, one coming out. You know, I, I, this is a project that's probably going to be exempt too because it's water treatment mm -hmm. um but i don't want to comment further um yeah i think someone's just trying to like get everyone to see if they can get a response i believe this is the well that was shut down because it had really high pfas so right. and that's where they're going to put the water right. treatment plant right yeah so i mean it's a good thing at the end of the day, yeah. especially for uh, those like in this neighborhood who are connected to public water, I would assume. So it is, and it's, yeah, it's not a bad thing. Um, it's part of progress. So there's, we're not the only community fighting the PFAS no. fight right now. There's a lot of them in the state of Massachusetts. That's right. It's like everywhere yeah. in the US. Yeah. So it is everything. It's creepy. Yeah, it's awful. So one thing uh, I do want to bring up is we've already discussed redacting who it's from and so forth. I did notice on another agenda this with the um, the sender's information. So. Oh, it hadn't been redacted. Right. So I don't know if we're the only, or if it's just us redacting that sort of stuff. If we decided, we as a board, we decided okay. that we didn't need to know who people were. So it's probably just us. Okay. Yeah. Um, That's correct. Okay. Cool. Um, scheduled date for discussion review of. Municipal vulnerable vulnerability and hazard mitigation plans. Matt, Jessica, uh, seven pages. It's the black bind. It's the black binder in the uh, in oh. the materials box. So I'm gonna read the email from Beth Faxon about this. That email is also in the yeah in the black binder. yeah which is in the folder yeah or well I'll, I'll just summarize it yep um anyway yeah. conservation commission is or Beth wants us to issue a copy to each member of the commission so you can review the plan for a discussion at a future meeting 
which we are hoping to plan for next meeting. Um, please focus on the executive summary sections one, two, six, table six, one, section seven, table seven, one, taking note of which areas the Conservation Commission is in the spotlight. And then she's requesting a time slot at a future CONSCOM meeting to go over this plan with the commission members and have some discussion regarding how the plan can be integrated into your ongoing work. So, um, yeah, best just looking to be on an agenda to gain your feedback from this plan and how we can incorporate CONSCOM action into it. She, she also shared a flyer uh, that shows that FEMA is offering a course uh, on Monday, October 3rd and Tuesday, October 4th, if people are interested in attending to that as well. What is that yeah. class? Have um, we gotten uh, that notification yet, Matt? Yeah, it's in, it's in the folder. Uh, it's in the correspondence under... Um, in correspondence. Uh, within uh, education? Uh, correspondence oh, 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 and then in the on. HMP and MPP plan. Uh, it's yeah. in there. But uh, if you guys want, I can email it out to everyone. Well, yeah. is it in the one drive? Yeah. Yeah, it was. But it's kind of yeah. hidden. So I can I can email yeah. it out to everyone. Yeah, that'd be great if we just all had just the link just to that. Thank you. Sure. So we're all going to be given a, a binder similar to that. So we can study that out at, uh, at our leisure. There is a link to it uh, that you can go to um, that Beth shared in her email. Um, okay. Trying to there's, think. There's uh, one hard copy which needs to stay in the land use office. So if you guys yeah. want to read hard copy, you would probably have to come in and make an appointment to do that. Okay. Um, yeah. I need hard copy. Does the does the mm. town own a binding machine? Ooh. You might want. I don't think so. You should get one of those. I mean, it's 160, what, 167 pages on the long. State, it's on the state website. Yeah. No, look, it's just, I need, to be, I need to be able to mark stuff up. Did you put all these sheets in the sheet protector, Matt? Uh, no, no, that was Beth. That's that binder's not our doing. Yeah, that binder is oh, just quality. Like, I don't know <laughs> if it was just her, or, but yeah, no, she, <laughs> she really worked hard on it. Well, thank you, Beth. And um, so that she wants, we, we're supposed to have this reviewed by the next meeting? Well, Probably just in the next couple of meetings, but okay. it would be good to, yeah, set a deadline so that she can also plan her schedule to attend our meeting to get your feedback. Okay, thank you. Um. Okay, well, uh, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> okay, so she's coming in next meeting then? Was that what the, de the decision was? I, I was kind of overwhelmed by the binder of stuff. Um, I think that's what our tentative plan was, but it's up to your approval well, next meeting or probably the meeting after would would be best we have well again we have summary of discussion of town council next meeting review of um town wetland bylaws plus hearings um is it a realistic thing if you guys are up to staying late <laughs> um i said the one after <laughs> So let's do it the first meeting in October. Yeah. October 12th. Is that acceptable? Works yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. That gives we I mean it's so it's such a big document. We we I need that. I need that time. Mm -hmm. I think we'll all be here because I'm gonna have hmm. you have a class that night, Pat. I have a class that Good night for you. And a class um next the 28th. So both both those meetings you'll be out at class. Okay, so we need to make sure. I was trying not to do Wednesday, but I didn't log out. No, no, and that's fine. Yeah. Um and Colby's gonna be out. Well so we're gonna have to start nailing down people to come to meetings or make sure they are. 
Um, I know Kevin had a personal uh, thing to attend to tonight. Um, Pat has class next meeting. Will be uh, Wednesday soccer for him. Um, well, he and, said he's got his graduate his class. Right. So. GIS stuff. Uh, so, yeah. So we'll just have to reach out and make sure we have enough for a form. I think tonight's a very unusual evening. Um, all right. Five point oh, uh, education and conferences. So, in the there's a whole bunch of MACC classes. The fall conference is going on. Um, Pat brought in a invoice uh, for you to submit, Matt. And she's you're muted. Sorry. Uh, perfect. Yeah, just leave it in the box and I'll I'll take care of that. No yeah. problem. You want it in the meeting you know material the box? Is, Pat? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so well, I'll or you put it on my desk, whatever's easiest for you. I'm going to leave it in the box. Uh up, you know, towards the front of it. I'll leave it with awesome. the um, mandatory referrals. Thank you. Oh. Yes, uh, there's a whole lot of classes coming up in uh, September and October uh, on the website and find the schedule. I also see that we have Bay State Roads. Yep. Mm -hmm. Beth shared that uh, with us. Oh, are these free classes? Uh, I don't think they are, unfortunately. So I just put it in there in case any of you were really interested, but I think they cost like 70 bucks a class. So, yeah. I'm 55. Well, 45, I think. But we can pay for those, the, we can pay for those, but not, but not those, I don't believe. Right? What are, well, James, what are those classes? So, um, yeah, well, the, there's one today maintaining your uh, roadways and pavement preservation in Greenfield. Um, there's one tomorrow, structural stormwater BMPs uh, operations and maintenance under mass MS4 general permit, and that's virtual. Uh, September 20th is effective fever management in Berlin. Uh, snow and ice operations for frontline employees, multiple dates and locations. So I assume this will website. Uh, and then concrete sidewalk installation, September 27th uh, in Westminster. Yeah, we are, we the our fund will only pay for classes that help us support the WPA. Right. Well, some of again, one of those may may fit in that category. Okay. Well, in my opinion, there's two. Uh, sure. In my opinion, yeah. structural stormwater dust management operations and maintenance. I know stormwater doesn't fall under us, but um, it, it's in my opinion part of conservation. Mm -hmm. and then snow and ice operations um, because of the chlorides. But um, you can go base state roads, uh, UMass Transportation Center. Um, so the website's umasstransportationcenter.org. Matt, is this uh, email in the folder? Yep, mm -hmm. okay. it is. And it's in the education folder. On the OneDrive? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Correct. <sighs> so, um, 6.0 uh, items for discussion at next meeting. Uh, we have we go back to TWB Chapter 138 discussion with Town Council, TWB Chapter 150-1 and 150-2. I'll review that. And then, Jessica, you said we had hearings coming up. Yep, we're going to have a NOI public hearing for 238 South Rail Road. Okay. And I assume there will be a site visit next week for it or the week after? Uh, I believe it's next Wednesday. 
Yes, the 21st. So I'll email that to you guys early next week, the details for that. Um, and then, sorry, did I miss when we would like to invite Beth Faxon to come hear your impact? Not just me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> First meeting in October. October 12th. Okay. I wrote it down on the, um, on the agenda. First night. Okay. I'll put it in the folder or in the box. Got it. Thanks. Um, and then, uh, are you going, or is there a way to get a bunch of bound copies of the hazard mitigation plan for us? Mm -hmm. We have a budget for that? Budget, no. Matt, can you look into that at least? I can, I can look into it, yeah. Hmm? Um, I'll ask have Mike you about it. your iPad yet? No, not yet. We're still looking. Uh, we've gotten the auger and the soil book, though. Yeah, you're still looking. Like we I haven't started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it budgeted? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Cool things. Yeah. So we, yeah, we should get on that for sure. Our to do's, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who's got time? Oh, we've got plenty yeah. of it, Joan. Come on. Yeah, we all do. <laughs> okay, so the next meeting is Wednesday, September 28, 2022, at 7 p.m. Board of Select Chambers, second floor. This meeting will be held via virtual Zoom, remote, in accordance with COVID 19 safe meeting guidelines. Can I get a motion to adjourn? I have a motion to at adjourn. 8.34 p.m. I second. Uh, Joan Savoy, yes. Pat Joan Maria. James Gates, yes. And LaCroix, yes. Thank you all.